Welcome to the Conscious Fire Culture. We give you direct access to healers, practitioners, and shamans as we explore alternative medicine for wildland firefighters. The mission is to break the stigma of mental health in wildland fire and lower the suicide rates. Our intention is to guide you through a transformation that creates a ripple effect in our community. Welcome. I'm so excited you've made it. All right, check this out. Mountain Mind Tricks and the Wildland Wellness Foundation are coming together for this amazing collaboration. This is going to be the most powerful thing to come to the wildland fire community in a long time, I think. And that is, you know, master plant ceremonies mixed with holistic medicine, with acupuncture, chiropractor, so the breakthrough session, all these things coming into one to support you, the wildland firefighter, to help you regain your mental health, your physical health, and get back to peak performance as soon as possible. Because when we work with master plants and essential oils and acupuncture and chiropractic and mental emotion release, when we put all these together, it is a powerful transformational experience that really it's it's beyond words because once you're touched by the divine once you're in touch with that healing energy of the universe with that innate power for you to heal yourself there's no stopping it it's like a runaway train it's like you're gonna start healing you're gonna have a transformation that has this ripple effect that goes beyond just you and your family but to your crew to your fire station to your you know your workstation to your forest, to your region, to the community. And really what we want to do is, is give you the most amazing ceremonial experience and back that up with the integration. How do you take those experiences and come back to 3D reality and implement them? Implement those lessons, those realizations that are so deep and profound that your entire life changes. How do you integrate those? You know, one of my great mentors once told me, it's like, you get a puzzle and all the pieces are all spread out but then you get to start putting that puzzle back together into a new way a new possibility a new way of being and that's that's what the foundation is working on you know the first retreat is the end of January of 2022 and if that's interesting to you I want you to go to the wildlandwellnessfoundation.com check that out and just schedule a call with Melissa and See if it's a good fit. Again, that's wildlandwellnessfoundation.com. The foundation of Mountain Mind Tricks is the breakthrough sessions for wildland firefighters. And it's one of the most rewarding things I've ever done in my entire life is to guide somebody through an awakening experience, remembering that they have the power to heal and giving them the tools to release the anger, sadness, fear, hurt, and guilt from their past, and to truly release it, to let it go. And when I see these transformations in my clients, it's like night and day. There's before the breakthrough session, and then there's after. And there's just so many times that their transformation touches me that I, I cry. Like it, it's so powerful and joyful to see that transformation inside them. And and there's there's so many modalities out there. There is acupuncture and traditional therapy and plant medicine. And but I love the breakthrough session. I think it's an amazing adjunct to all these other things or even Western medicine. And the breakthrough session is so important to me because it's what changed my life. It's what allowed me to completely let go of my anxiety and to move forward and to become the healer that I am today, to start my own company, Mountain Mind Tricks. Like that's, that's because of the breakthrough session. Without that, there wouldn't be any of this. And so if you're interested in a breakthrough session to really overcome the blocks in your life, to let it all go, to really step into your light and be who you know you could be, if you want that to happen for you, just go to mountainmindtricks.com. Go ahead and click that button, Alternative Mental Health. Scroll through there. If it looks like something you want, let's, let's schedule a discovery session. Let's just chat about it. Let's have a talk to make sure it's a good fit. So again, go to mountainmindtricks.com and click the alternative mental health button. Welcome everybody to the podcast today. I'm so excited to have Caroline Wong with us. She's a healer and podcaster. And Caroline, could you 
introduce yourself to us and let us know how you became, you know, how you got into healing and hypnosis and podcasting, everything that you're doing, how, like, what's the genesis of this? How did this happen for you? So I'm Caroline. Um, I am a, um, an educator. Well, I left teaching, uh, after 25 years this January. And I wanted to, I've been wanting to start my own business for such a long time. And January just seemed to be the right pivotal moment for me to just take the plunge and do it. And being an educator for all those years um, is very time consuming. I also have three children. And when you have, you're an educator and you have kids and you have family and you have you know, a house and all the things, it's just a very time consuming um, career. And it just, I kept putting off doing my own thing. Long story short, here I am today. So how did I get into what I'm doing now? About, oh my gosh, it's probably been like 12, 13 years ago. I was sitting in my hairdresser's chair and he, he was always into like biofeedback and hypnotherapy and meditation and all these things. And he would always talk to me about those things. And it was kind of like, I would listen to him and I would hear him, but it, it just, it was like just interesting conversation for me. Like, oh, wow, that's cool. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you're doing that. That sounds really fascinating. And then I would move on. And so one day I went in and he had a gift for me. He gave me this book called The Disappearance of the Universe. He's like, Caroline, I know that this is probably going to, you know, be a little out there for you, but I want you to read it and tell me what you think. So I read the book and I was like, oh my gosh, this is really fascinating. I want to learn more. So then when I go back, Mind you, this is like over the course of probably a year or so we're going through this whole conversation. Every time I go in like once a month, we're having these mini conversations and they just build and build and build. And so I go in one day and I said, all right, Dan, you know what? I want to be a yoga teacher. And he's like, Caroline, you don't even meditate. Like, how would you possibly teach a yoga class if you cannot meditate? So that started my journey of, okay, well then I'm going to have to start doing yoga and... I'm going to have to learn all the things. So, and I had tried meditation before and I just could not sit there uh, and feel like I had nothing to, to meditate on. I mean, I'm sure I probably did have lots to meditate on, but I didn't, I always felt that there was like this specific way that you had to meditate. So I end up getting my yoga certification, teaching yoga. And then as you I think as you go through that process of getting your certification and going to yoga, like you're drinking water, basically, eat, eat, sleep, breathe yoga, you start to realize that there's so much depth within the human body system and how we can heal ourselves, how we can connect more with the inner part of us through the practice of yoga. And then of course, at the end of yoga, we would go into Shavasana, which is a mini meditation to let the body just absorb everything that we had just done in that hour. And I started to realize that I could meditate, that I could allow myself to be still, even if it was for that five minutes laying there, I could, I could be still. And so fast forward, probably, I don't know, seven, eight years down the, down the road, um, my dad starts to get sick. He's diagnosed with cancer. And I'm grateful for my practice because that's a, I used that practice to just help me get through a lot of the things that I was going through with my dad. And after that, after he passed, um, we ended up moving to Orlando. We picked up from Broward County in Florida. And we moved to Orlando. And at that point, it was you know, a big move for us because we had lived basically with our kids in, in, you know, Dade County, my in Broward for probably, I guess it at that point was 17 years. And it was picking up like everything from 17 years where the kids grew up, all of these things. And it was a very emotional move, but we knew we needed to do it. 
Um, so we get to Orlando and it just seemed like everything was so tumultuous once we got here. My kids were not really, you know, happy with the school that they were in. My son was struggling. Um, my daughter, one of my daughters was in the middle of an eating disorder and it was just, and then I'm, you know, dealing with, you know, the death of my dad and it just seemed like everything was crashing down. And so I started, that's when after my, you know, after the yoga, then I started getting into, um, some crystal energy therapy and I found an awesome teacher. She, um, was in New York at the time and then later moved to Canada, but Krista Miller, I did my certification under her, which she's a phenomenal, um, crystal energy healer teacher. And so I went through that program and then that was another layer that I built onto, okay, now I have my yoga, my meditation and my crystal therapy work, which was just amazing with that triad together. And then as I started for going further into the meditation process, um, I started finding like different types of meditations, whether they were visual, you know, more of a visual um, representation of like taking you on a journey. Then there were more, they were just breathing cues. Um, and then I stumbled across a hypnotherapy recording and I started doing that regularly. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. Like this is really um, fascinating. And then I let my daughter listen to it and things started to, once I started doing the hypnotherapy part, things really started to shift and I knew that I was onto something. Um, and so I said, you know what, this is, this is going to be like the last part of my, my toolkit that I feel like is going to make everything complete. And I know maybe down deep inside, you know, someone's listening and they're saying, well, you don't need another thing to, to complete whatever it is that you're doing. But this particular thing, this hypnotherapy was the one, I think it was the, the major catalyst that propelled me to where I am today. And so after doing that same recording for, I guess, oh my gosh, it was probably like two or three months. I literally would listen to that recording every single night before I would go to bed. Um, I said to myself, you know what, I want to become certified in hypnotherapies because this can help people. I, th I really believe that this can help people heal because it was helping me so much. And I wasn't even in front of a real human doing my session. It was a recording. So I'm like, if this is a, so if this is powerful as a recording, imagine what it must be like in person. So I go through my hypnotherapy process. I become certified, tons of work, lots of, you know, clients, practice clients. Well, it ends up, I'm having to do all of my now COVID hits. And instead of me being able to do in person, you know, hypnotherapy sessions, I have to do them all via Zoom, which of course I had never done hypnotherapy with real humans besides the ones that I did at my first initial training where we all met in person for, you know, three days. So I was like freaking out. I'm like, how am I going to, how am I going to do hypnotherapy via zoom with like almost 50 clients? Like this is, I don't even know how to do this. Well, I figured it out. And the one Testament that I have for that is the energy transfer over a computer is incredible. And I think some people doubt that you can even do sessions like that. I mean, I've done, you know, crystal healing sessions online and the zoom, um, hypnotherapy sessions are pretty amazing. Um, and I've done both in person and I've done zoom. And honestly, I don't really know that there's that big of a difference. Um, so that's, that's kind of, I know it was a little bit of a long story there, but that's how I got to where I am today. And I've kind of just put a lot of these healing modalities together. And when I'm coaching someone, if there's something that I feel like they could use in that, in that particular coaching package for if it's a one on one, I have lots of things to pull from and to use 
um, if they are willing to want to go down that route. So that's how I came to be where I am today. Oh, that's so amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your story. And, and it just resonates with me so much because I think my healing journey personally was, um, I think, really initiated by a, a death close to me, um, not a family member, but a crew, a crew person. And um, it really was, it changed everything for me. I think the grief for me was a catalyst for like all the baggage I didn't deal with my entire life. All of a sudden I had to. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, and and I think that's such a common, interesting piece of grief is it kind of brings up everything. Um, and so I just really resonate with your story and I love, I love this yoga and meditation and, and hypnosis and putting all together. And, and I think there's, whenever we use the word hypnosis or hypnotherapy, there's, um, there's people, I think, tend to go to the stage hypnotist. Mm-hmm. Right? Or to yep. hypnosis is weird. I don't know what that is. And I think I would love to um, take a minute here and, and just demystify hypnosis because it is so powerful. It has completely changed my life. Mm-hmm. And I think you're like, I think for me, the best way I can explain it is that it's, it's a meditation with an intention of healing. And especially when we have a practitioner that's um, certified like yourself uh, and like me, it's like, there's so much possibility with hypnosis. And I kind of feel like it's the modern shamanism actually, because I'm going in a trance, the client's going in a trance and we're doing work, right? Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, And I think that when, when you tell people that hypnotherapy is basically a, a meditation state but you're also able to, we've relaxed you to the point where you're able to be in that theta state where we're, where you're accessing the subconscious and the subconscious is not going to fight your decision-making. Whereas the conscious brain is always giving us, um, I don't want to say an argument, but if we want to do something, then sometimes the ego steps in and says, oh no, that's not going to be it as a protector. No, don't do that because you're, you might fail at that and we want to protect you. So, you know, you might not want to do that thing. So it, it hinders us a lot more of the time, I think, than it's beneficial. And the amazing thing about hypnotherapy is that we can take a client to a space where it's, there's no judgment there they're literally listening to their higher self, their most inner self. And that inner self is actually giving them the guidance and wisdom that they need to move to the next level of their, of their space in life. It has nothing to do with something that we are telling them. We're guiding them to get to that space. We're continuing to ask those questions as they are in that space, but it's really the client's own wisdom inside that's telling them what they need to be doing. Do you find that that's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love that so much that we're, we're helping the client reconnect with their highest self. And I think um, at least that's what I gathered from, from the way you're explaining this. And I think that's Mm -hmm. so true of helping them connect with that, that higher power within themselves. And it really is, guiding the client to a self healing. And I think that's, that's why hypnosis is so powerful is because we're teaching the client how to heal themselves, um, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and and I love that. I love that part of hypnosis. And, and I want to go back to something you said earlier about, you know, um, because I I have the same feeling of like, I really want to work with people in person, like, and then COVID hit and it's just like, and I've been working from the computer as well. And, and, it's, it's a blessing in a lot of ways. In some ways it's like, I, I, I want more connection, but I, mm-hmm. I see the results are the same. And I think mm-hmm. to me, it's like this kind of from a five element theory, there's, there's the, the spirit element, right? There's the Kiave and Huna is, is more my background, but the, the spirit element mm-hmm. um, and the computer, the, the virtual space is the spirit element. And I think for me, it, it allows us to collapse the space and time even more than in person sometimes, which is really, really interesting to me. I feel um, I can actually connect with people on a lot deeper 
level because of that um, that computer space. It's really, it's weird. It's interesting. Yeah. I would, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah. So when I first started, um, the first couple of Zoom uh, sessions that I had, it was a little bit, it was a little scary. I'm not going to lie. It was scary because all of my, my practice ones that I had done thus far were in person with, with people sitting in front of me. And so I said to myself, well, how is this going to translate over the computer? Like, I can't really look at their eye movement. It's hard for me to see, you know, how they're breathing. Cause when someone's in person with you and you're watching their eyelids, you're watching how they're breathing, you know, their chest rising up and down, you're watching the movements to determine if they've kind of gone to that next level of relaxation, it's much easier to see, but on the computer, you know, on zoom, some people don't want to have their camera on. Some people would have their camera on. So I'm literally doing this, what sometimes almost felt like blind. But somehow the connection remained. And I feel like it almost made people less intimidated by the process in it being over the computer. It wasn't such a scary thing. And That's when I realized, you know, I would preface the client before, you know, when we got on, I would say, okay, this is pretty much how it's going to go. You know, you have the choice of being on camera or not on camera, but I will tell you, it would be great for me to be able to see you because then I can monitor and look at how, you know, you're, you know, making sure that you're, you know, your breath, you know, you're breathing and all these kinds of things. And most people were very open to that. I've had very, you know, rarely would somebody say, oh, no, I'm not going to have my camera on. And which I thought was great because they're kind of dropping that they're allowing themselves to be vulnerable and open to the process, which is so critical when we're doing hypnotherapy. If the person is not truly willing and able to take, you know, to take part in this, in this spiritual growth, then they're going to fight a lot of the process along the way. And they have to be able to relax. They have to be able to slow themselves down. They've got to be able to listen to your words and believe and trust in the process. So as much as I like having people in person, there are also many benefits to them being online. I think it's a safety for them um, as far as their um, vulnerability goes. Yeah. Yeah. So powerful. And, and I think I would love to hear some of your experiences with, with this, because for me, what I, what I realized is like, as um, you know, I would take the client into hip in a hypnotic state and I would go there myself. I began to be able to like, kind of see them like Mm -hmm. remote viewing. Like I didn't need the computer, although we were connected that way, Mm -hmm. but it went deeper than that. And I think that's a skill that I started to develop after working with a lot of clients was like, I can, I can see their energy. I can see them um, with my mind's eye. And I'm curious if, if that's something that has um, developed um, or something you've heard of, or, or I'm curious about that. Yes. So I completely agree with that. There were a couple of sessions uh, towards like the middle of when I was doing my, my practice client work, um, where when you're, when I would take the client, let's say I'm taking them through their, you know, their initial hypnotherapy and I go through the four different selves, the emotional, the intellectual, the spiritual, and the physical self. And there were a couple of situations where when the, when I got the client to a certain place, they would, I would start to feel the things that they were going through. And there was one particular um, session where the client, it was her, um, it was her physical self. And she was in a room, it was almost like, like a cage. Um, but then there was only like one side was like bars, but the rest was like walls. But what, from what she could see, it was a cage and she was completely in the dark. And she kept telling me that she didn't know what she wanted to turn on a light, but she couldn't figure out where the light was. And so I started to just be in that space with her. 
And I told her that I could see, she couldn't see it, but I could see that there was a light switch on the other side of the room and it was dark, but I said, you have to just keep walking straight. So it was weird. I could see where she was and I kept telling her to just walk straight and she got her point of reference from where the bars were and I told her to turn her. It was almost like I was leading um, a visually impaired person to find something. And it was fascinating because when she got there, she turned, she found the light switch and she turned on the light. And at that moment, I knew that I was really on to something. And it just continued. The more I worked with clients, the more I was able to and will continue to hone in on that energy of just being kind of one in the experience. And that's what is so fascinating is that you genuinely not necessarily take on the energy of the other person, but I believe that when you're truly embedded in this work, you, your energetic body becomes part of the process in that person's healing session, because you are helping to be, it's almost like they're borrowing your energy to move themselves through some of these sessions that they go through because you can see things that they can't. Yeah. Wow. And, um, so much. and that was, you know, that was just fascinating. And, and when people come to you and they think that they're coming to you for a certain reason, you know, for they're having, you know, there's a block in their business or something and they can't figure out what to do next. And they do a session and it really had nothing to do with their block in business. It's something else that they have a block in that's creating the business block. So it's very fascinating what, what people uncover and it always changes. You know, you can have someone come to you and do a basic, you know, hypnotherapy session where you're talking to all four of the different selves. And then they come back two or three months later and you do the same session. You're going to get different work. You're going to get different messages because hopefully they've grown and shifted from that space that they were in when they saw you before. So now we're looking at a revised version, but now we're moving on to something else. Yeah, that's so beautiful. And I love your story with this client because uh, I think something that comes to mind is, is, and I'm curious the the client's experience as well, because um, when we change symbols, like even just turning on a light in this person's, um, and, you know, we, we can talk about this of like, is it real or not? It doesn't matter. It's, it's the mm-hmm. unconscious creating this. It is so real for that person that yep. it totally, it changes their brain. It changes their body. It changes, you know, from my perspective, it, it changes their, like their everything, their mind, body, spirit, right? That's really what hypnosis does. Um, mm-hmm. But I think just the fact of changing one symbol one like turning on a light, that was probably really transformational for that person, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was. And I've also had another client who started to speak Spanish in the middle of her session. And that was and she does she does speak fluent Spanish. But in this particular session, um, it was, it was something about uh, her not being able to, or her feeling like she had difficulty in, in public speaking, like it's always been a fear of hers. And we were able to take it all the way back to when she was a little girl and something dramatic happened in her life and she didn't speak for almost two months. And when she did finally speak, she felt like no one wanted to hear what she had to say. And that continued with her for so many years. And every time she would get up to do something where even if it was just talking in front of um, her, you know, high school class or whatever it was, she always was afraid. And she would just kind of shut down. And we narrowed it down to what happened to her as I think it was like back when she was four or five and it was just fascinating because just right out of no, like in the middle of the session, she just starts speaking Spanish. 
but speaking Spanish to herself to tell herself that this was not her fault. Like she shouldn't look at herself as being, you know, defective or needing to be fixed. This was something that happened in the subconscious that we were able to work through. And the difference in her at the end of the session was just incredible. Like just her whole demeanor, her whole um, outlook, like it looked like she had just lost like so much emotional baggage from that one session. So I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I mean, firm believer that people do not have to suffer needlessly for things that they feel like they just can't either grasp or they are very confused on, or they just have this lingering thing that just seems like it follows them year by year by year, you know, definitely look into something like hypnotherapy because it can really help you unlock things that you would not normally find in your day-to-day conscious thought process. And I think that's where, that's where the beauty of the work lies. So. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. And, and I love this getting to like that, that, that root cause of the, of the speaking issue. And I think that's so important of, of finding the root cause in the unconscious. And I think what's so interesting to me about this work is that I think it's, um, there's so much stored inside the body. And I've come to realize that the unconscious mind is the body. I think that is the nerve, like the whole nervous system. And we get these things stored Mm -hmm. all over our body. And sometimes I'll have clients that, um, you know, they'll find a pain in their body or there's something like an object stuck in their body or like whatever it is, it's, it's, there's this mind body connection that is so powerful. And I think one of my favorite things about hypnotherapy and, um, you know, I use a technique called mental emotional release, which is so similar. Um, and, and the people's faces change, their body changes, like before and after the session, you could show pictures and it's like their, their body language is totally different. Their physiology has changed because they've let so much go. And I think that's one of my favorite, favorite things about hypnosis and hypnotherapy is that it's, it's so profound. Like you said, even in one session. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and people in general, you know, when you're, when people are watching a movie, when they are, you know, just uh, driving from here to the grocery store sometimes, or from here to their job, or if they ride the train somewhere and they get there and they're like, oh my gosh, like, how did I get here? Well, it was because you basically were in like a driving trance or you were in a travel trance or you were, when you're watching a movie, the same kind of thing happens. Your body is relaxed, but the, the, the fact that you're just fixated on watching the screen and you're so involved in that movie, that's why you cry in a movie. That's why you jump when the person, you know, the monster's coming up behind someone or they jump out from a bill, whatever it is. It's because the brain does not realize that you're not physically there experiencing that yourself. So that's the true testament to that's how we, that's how the, the hypnotherapy works is because the brain does not realize that you're not in that time and space. So when we take someone back to do inner child work, or we take someone back to do parts therapy, or we're doing whatever it is that we're doing in that process to help heal a situation, we can go back to that situation in time. And even if the person is deceased, you can still access that person in that time and space. And you can do things in that, in that place to help heal the situation. It's not going to fix what took place or what happened, but you're able to let go and move that part of that trauma away from the body and kind of give it back to, or let it go or put it where it needs to be as long as it's not with you anymore. And that is, that's another powerful piece, you know, in hypnotherapy that I think a lot of people don't realize. They think that it's just, you know, a swinging pendulum and, 
someone telling you to close your eyes. And it's a lot more than that. And the more people do it, the more they're able to uncover and the more they're able to let go of. I want to guide you through natural wellness and holistic medicine which means using products like essential oils, essential vibes, glutathione mouthwashes, or even reading books. There's so many products out there that can help us, supplements, essential oils. There's so many things about the doTERRA lines of essential oils that I use every day, like lemon to detox my body and help me hydrate, like on guard to give me that extra edge in my immune system with the pandemic going, uh, balance to keep me grounded and moving forward in my life. I use the oils every single day, morning, afternoon, night. One of the biggest things they help me with is sleep. I sleep so well because I'm, you know, I'll lay on the lavender, I'll lay on the balance, I'll feel so grounded and sleepy and it's lights out. And I know the wildland fire community just struggles so much with sleep, really the lack of it, right? On top of that, there's books. There's, I've written three major books for the Wildland Fire community, and, and I want you to try them out. Give them a read. Get the ebook. Get the paperback. Whatever suits you. But there's Overcome Anxiety Like a Hero. Really teaches you how to get into a flow state. Awakened by Heart Fire is really the spiritual aspects of Wildland Fire, and the Heart Fire anthology, the guided meditations, the Heart Fire method will completely change your life. And of course, Six Minutes for Excellence. That is a guidebook for wildland firefighter excellence, peak performance, mindset, all those things. So go to mountainmindtricks.com, check out the store, check out essential oils, essential vibes, uh, go to the publishing tab, check out the books. Natural wellness is all about taking one step today that makes us 1% better. 1% better today, 1% better tomorrow, and 1% better the next day and the next day. One little habit adds up to moving an entire mountain with our health. That's what I want to guide you through. The essential oils, essential vibes, books, supplements, whatever you need, I'm here for you. So just go ahead and go to mountainmindtricks.com and click on the shop and go to essential oils, essential vibes, or go to the publishing tab and, and check out the books we've got. Yeah, so true. And, and I love... Uh, you know, you mentioned parts therapy, and that's something I do as well. And I think the parts integration is so important. And there's so many, so many afflictions that we have in life where it's like, I really want this on this side, but the other side's like, no, you shouldn't have that. Or maybe it's like the values are conflicting. And it's like, I'm not sure, but I feel weird because I want this and I want that at the same time. And it's like this internal battle that people have these battling thoughts. You know, it's like one thought this, the next thought's this, and it's totally opposite. And I think these parts and feeling, I think after my own parts integration and really like working through multiple parts and really feeling whole for the first time, that was, that was an experience of itself that is so powerful to really bring home all those parts. And actually, um, I guess the best way I could explain it is like actually be inside your body. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a big one for people. And, and for me in my own healing journey, that was like, that was the catalyst of where my healing really started to shift majorly. It was like coming back into my body and, and being whole and integrated. Right. Right. Um, and I, I also believe that with hypnotherapy, you're able to really hone in on specific things that people continue to suffer with. And if someone is having difficult, let's say, I mean, we'll take weight loss as a really big umbrella there, but usually it's not about the food. It's not about the fact that they just love to eat, you know, junk food or whatever it is. There's always going to be a root underlying cause to that, to that issue of weight gain or weight loss. And this I know because of my, you know, my daughter's eating disorder. And we, you know, it's, it's something that you have to find the root of, because if you don't get to the root of it, you're going to find people that lose weight, they lose weight fast, but then they end up going back into that same space again. And that's because we didn't deal with the whole issue of why we have weight issues from the beginning. 
And yes, it could be metabolic. It could be, you know, the, the genetic makeup of the body. But I truly believe that when you find the issues, maybe the person doesn't want to lose the weight because they're afraid of their life, how their life will be after that, how the people around them will react to them. Or if they do, um, if they don't lose the weight, then they can stay in this victim mode. They can stay in this place where they don't have to be accountable for themselves because they're always going to use the excuse of whatever it is that they've come up with in their head. And so you can go through all of these different scenarios, but when you start using hypnotherapy to figure out what the root is and what the parts are that are causing this person to be in this endless cycle of, you know, yo-yo dieting or, you know, all of the things, it's, it's just fascinating. And I, it's, I don't think people understand sometimes that it goes that deep, that it can actually be that, you know, people want to just fixate on, okay, I'm going to eat hell, I'm going to eat salads, and I'm going to drink my smoothie, and I'm going to have my green juice. And, and that's how I'm going to do, I'm going to lose my weight. But if there's something underlying that's causing them to feel that unhappiness may not even be anything to do with the weight. You know what I mean? Like it, and I'm sure you've probably seen this in people before. They think that they're suffering from one thing that's causing them to do X, Y, Z, but it's really has something to do with something completely different. And that's what's triggering all of the other effects that are taking place in their life. Yeah. Yeah. So true. And I think so often clients will come to me with like, you know, this is what's going on in my life. And it's like, when we actually get into the work, it's like, something so different and so much deeper than they thought possible, you know, especially with mm -hmm. the wildland firefighters, right? There's all this anxiety and um, PTSD and depression kind of stuff going on. And it's like, it's not actually the firefighting necessarily. Of course there's trauma there, but it's like, it's deeper than that. And it's just like stacked on layers on top of probably childhood trauma. Right. And it's like mm -hmm. even deeper. And I think I would love to, to hear um, your thoughts on, on something I've, I've noticed that's um, been coming up, I guess, often, but not very common is, is um, maybe there's an ancestral healing or, you know, either genealogical, like it's a parent or great grandparent, or maybe it's a past life healing. And I'm curious if, if that comes up in your practice once in a while. Yes. So I really believe that when we start to go through and find the patterns and things in our lives that are not necessarily the most productive. And I'm just kind of just throwing out the most productive because I don't want to say all negative things that we encounter in life, you know, ruin our lives because we do need some, you know, maybe traumas in our life to be able to move forward in certain things. They, they create lessons in our life. Um, but myself, um, I was diagnosed at 11. Well, they tried to diagnose me. I spent about a year in and out of doctor's offices, in and out of the hospital. And they finally diagnosed me at 12, what they thought was Crohn's disease. And they ended up doing basically life-saving surgery. I was down to like 45 pounds at age 12. So if you can imagine what that looked like. And basically on my deathbed. And the surgeon said, okay, if we don't do this now, she's not going to make it because her body is already poisoning itself. Well, fast forward all these years and I'm learning about energy. And if we go back and we believe that when we're in utero, we are experiencing the, the traumas and the patterns from the person carrying us, our, our mother, our parent, so when I go back and I look at some of the things, you know, that my mom was very stressed. Um, she was probably going through, you know, difficulties in many different areas. And possibly a lot of that trauma and a lot of those things I carried was, was, was pushed into me in utero. And when you look at you know, when people are suffering from anything in the digestive, any immune suppressant, 
um, immune deficient uh, diseases, the, the majority of those diseases stem from lots of stress, lots of just digestive. And my mom also had some digestive issues and I was born with digestive issues. So I had been fighting that for many years, but it all just kind of culminated into that one big space. So when we talk about inheriting things from our parent or inheriting things from the ancestral line, I 100% believe that. But there's also ways that we can break ourselves free from those patterns and from those energetic cords. And that's another powerful piece that people should be, you know, aware of that you're not, you're not always tied to that genetic space in time that you think you are stuck with. Yeah. Oh, so powerful. <clears throat> oh, thank you. That was a beautiful explanation. Thank you so much for that. And, and um, I'm curious on how, how do you integrate um, some of the crystal healing and, and energy um, when you're using hypnosis with your clients? So when I'm doing hypnosis with my clients and they want to use crystal therapy at the same time, what I basically have is I have a grid of the body and on paper. And so based on what I feel like their body needs at that time, after going through their, you know, after going through their intro questions and seeing what it is that they're trying to work with and what they're trying to heal, I place my crystals on that body grid as we're going through the hypnotherapy session. And then I will also leave them on there for a couple of days um, and then check in with them to see how they are, you know, how things are going. And it doesn't, they don't necessarily always have to be going through a hypnotherapy session. I've done crystal grids just on you know, body grids on people that just call me up and say, Hey, or my friend is like, Hey, you know, I've got this issue going on. Can you, you know, make a grid for me? And it's, it's crazy how much it really, like it helps. I'm not saying that it's going to completely cure someone, but it definitely, when you have that energetic you know, tie, when you really put your intention into that space, there really are benefits. And I know that there's people that think it's really hokey. And you know what, that's fine. Everybody can have their own, you know, their own opinion. But I wholeheartedly believe in what I do in my practice. And that, that intuitively, I, I think, makes the practice work. And when you believe in something, and I'm sure you can attest to this as well, when you believe that you're, what you, the work that you do with your clients helps to bring, you know, healing to them and helps them to get better, you know, your energy putting, you putting your energy into that also helps them heal as well. So, and crystals, the way that crystals work is that our bodies, gen, our bodies energetically are constantly shifting and changing. Whereas the molecular, uh, the molecular makeup of a crystal doesn't change. It stays the same. So whatever is embodied in that crystal that that person is holding or that, that, that energy that I have on their grid, that energy is then being sent into their energetic space. And it's, it's helping to uh, balance that person's you know, energetic field. So that's how crystals are able to work on that level. So, and of course, when you have crystals that come from different places, you know, where they're mined, different places on earth, you have those magnetic properties that those, you know, however long, how, however ancient those crystals are, they've been sitting in those, in that land for however many years some millions of years. And the more, you know, the more that crystal is in that energetic, you know, the more energetic vibe or the more magnetic vibe that crystal was, was encased in, that's how much energy that crystal is going to hold. So that's kind of in a nutshell, how crystals work. 
I don't know if that did that answer your question on how I would work with them in hypnotherapy. Yeah, I love this idea of having a mm -hmm. drawn out grid of the body and using the yeah. crystals um, to um, unlock blockages and things like that. And, mm -hmm. and, and I'm a firm, I love rocks and like, my office is covered in like giant obsidian rocks, because I go to a specific place every year to gather my obsidian. Um, and because it, it helps transmute all the energy that we're working with, you know, as, as mm -hmm. a practitioner and, and all these things, there's so much, we could jam on crystals and rocks forever <laughs> because um, totally. they're, they're allies, they're friends, they're, yep. they're guides. They are so powerful. Um, and, and I think, like you said, you know, maybe it's not going to cure somebody's cancer necessarily, but it is a, a tool in the toolbox that really does unlock the body. And uh, yeah, crystals, and energy in the energy field. And I, and I think all those things are so important. I want to go back to something you said about believing in the work because mm -hmm. they have shown this in so many medical trials and experiments where, um, you know, they have proven where the, you know, a medical doctor, the more they believe in the medication, like the more wholeheartedly they believe in that medication doing what, you know, it's supposed to do the higher the, the yield or the better, uh, you know, experience the patient has. And mm -hmm. there's a direct correlation between what the doctor believes and what the patient experiences. There, there's a absolutely a direct correlation between that. And, um, I wholeheartedly believe in what I do, like my entire being. And I think, like you said, that is a foundation of being a healer is, is believing and, and helping that person believe in their own self healing. Yeah, I have, I've got a story. I'll, I'll make it, I'll make it a quick story. And this was about my mom. So I want to, I guess it's probably been, I don't know, like 10, 12 years ago. She had been admitted into the hospital because there, the, um, the gallstones in her gallbladder, one of them had gotten lodged, like, I guess in like the, the bile duct or something, something happened where there was a stone lodged and the doctors were going to have to go in and get it out because it was blocking. So I go down, I'm in the hospital with her. I bring her, um, the nurse sees me walk in and I've got a bag of crystals and I've got the crystals set up right by her, her table next to her bed in the, in the hospital. And I'm like, all right, mom, this is what we're going to do. I've got the crystals here. I'm going to do some, some Reiki on your, you know, near where the gallbladder is. And I'm going to have you hold a couple of crystals. We're going to do the Reiki and then let's see what happens. So I definitely, you know, I, she's got the crystals. They're by her bed. She's holding some and I'm doing Reiki and her, obviously her gallbladder is just when I've got my hands near her, it's just like, I can feel the heat radiating, like super hot. And so I'm like, do you feel that heat? And she's like, yeah, I, I can really feel this heat. So I was like, okay, but it wasn't bad. I mean, it was just enough to where she could recognize the energy transfer. And so the next day the surgeon was, was she scheduled to go in for surgery for them to remove the stone. And he's got a picture of it um, from when they did the ultrasound. You can see the stone visibly there. When he went in the next day to remove the stone, it was gone, nowhere hmm. to be found. And so another, another testament to when you believe that you can do something, it, it, it shifts. And so my mom couldn't believe it. And she's like, well, I wish they would have done a, um, an ultrasound before they took me in because then they wouldn't have had to have, you know, done anything I guess they had to make like a small incision or something, but when he went to go and find it, it was gone. Now wow. it could have obviously moved it. I'm sure it shifted and it maybe the body absorbed it or just was able to pass through. I have no idea what happened, but that was another testament to um, the power of energy. And it's, it's real. Uh, I, I don't really know. I mean, I've had too many experiences where I've used it and crazy things like that happen. 
And I don't want to say maybe they're not crazy things, because if we really believe in our work, we believe that we can change and we can shift things and we can move energy. And that's basically what we're doing in the body is you're moving energy. And wherever, when you were talking earlier about when a, you know, a client comes to you and they say, oh, well, I have a pain in this particular area of my body, that probably means, well, it does mean that they have energy or trauma that's where the energy in the tra- in the trauma goes. It goes to that particular body part. When people always complain of certain body parts always hurting, there's probably a really good chance that that's where the majority of their trauma is sitting. And when you talk about the beauty of movement in in breath work, in yoga, um, you know, walking or pretty much, I would say, I don't know, any exercise you're moving energy through the body and yeah, movement so true. is life. Movement is energy. Movement is, you know, your health and well being. And so when you can recognize that you've got places in your body that are constantly in chronic pain, you might need to look at that because that's not just, Oh, I just have a sore muscle today. If you constantly have stress in your shoulders or in your lower back or in your knees or in your feet or whatever it is, really, really look at that because chances are you're, you're storing um, traumatic experiences in those areas. So the last couple of years I had to quit coffee because coffee was like this liquid shot of anxiety for me. Like my heart would race I could focus intently, but only for a couple hours, and I would crash super hard. And my sleep was so off. I mean, I would be wandering the universe until, I don't know, three in the morning before I finally got to sleep. And then I had to get back out at a six or seven in the morning. And I was groggy. I was tired. It just wasn't working for me. It's not that I was mad at coffee. I was just really disappointed. And so I ended up quitting coffee. And I've been searching for an alternative for a long time. And that's when I came across mud water. Mud water is this amazing, amazing tea. It's got masala chai in it. It's got cacao, lion's mane, cordyceps, chaga, reishi, cinnamon, turmeric, and Himalayan sea salt. And what's so amazing is that you feel the same energy, that same burst that you get from coffee but it sustains all day. There's no crash, there's no headache, there's no dehydration. It's just this beautiful experience. And so yeah, I'm gonna say it, fuck your coffee. You gotta switch over to mud water because mud water will change your life. There's immune boosting properties, helps you focus with the lion's mane. There's one seventh of the caffeine compared to coffee. And so there's no jitters, there's no anxiety. It's just this beautiful experience with beautiful plants. So fuck your coffee. So if you want to try out mud water, I want you to go to mountainmindtricks.com slash mud water or go to the shop and click on the button. Again, that's mountainmindtricks.com slash mud water. So one of my favorite things about the mud water company is that they donate a percentage of their profits to the MAPS Institute. It's an organization that develops medical, legal, and cultural context for people to benefit from the careful uses of psychedelics. So the you know, MDMA psychedelic assisted therapy phase three trials, this is MAPS. And that's so important because there's been some amazing breakthroughs in the research with veterans and PTSD and uh, depression and all sorts of amazing things that they're doing. But it's so important to support this company. Yeah, so powerful to use the body as a compass for healing. And, and um, I love this mind-body connection. And, and um, do you mind if I kind of, I, I want to resonate with your story about your mother because I had kind of a similar experience and um, I still feel really weird about it because I didn't really ask her necessarily. And because she was admitted to the hospital last year for some sort of pancreatic thing going on and the doctors mm-hmm. were running all these tests and she was really not feeling well. And, and she called me from the hospital and said, yeah, this is what's going on. And, and I kind of just, I, I, you know, I was upset. I was kind of freaked out a little bit. And, and so I went to meditation and I, I traveled to her 
Mm -hmm. in the astral plane and I pulled something out of her body. I pulled something out of, out of her body. And the next day the doctors are running on her tests and she was feeling better. And they said, we, whatever was going on is gone. We have Mm -hmm. no idea what happened, but it's over that there's nothing weird on your tests anymore. Um, we're going to let you go and we have no idea what happened, but have a good day. Right. And that really was something that like blew my mind. It was like, Oh my God. I, I, that was a convincer for me that I do have a gift of traveling and pulling things out of people's bodies. Mm -hmm. And, um, that was, um, that was a really powerful experience for me. And so when you tell that story of healing your mother, that was really resonating with me. And and thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, if people realize that we are energetic bodies, like our whole body is energetically, it's not like we're not, we're not built with pieces that are not made from energy. We're, we're particles of energy. So when we experience an energetic an ener- energetic bond with another human being and we actually feel that resonance with that person like you know when you're vibing with someone and that's because right. your energy is in sync with that other human being when you when you see someone or you're out somewhere and you go into a building or a store or in a restaurant or you're sitting you know next to someone in traffic and you feel like a weird energy like you want to get out of the building or you don't feel like the energy is right where you are, or you can tell when someone is, you're near someone that's kind of got some dark energy to them. Like, can you feel that? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. it's, um, it took a long time for me to feel like I'm not a crazy person and that this is so weird. And, and I think the biggest thing is, is being, um, a really sensitive empath. Like it took a long time for me to understand what was even happening to me, because like you said, I would walk into, um, for me, I'd walk into like the fire, you know, the, the fire station at the hella base or at the engine bay or something. And I would just get images of everybody's weekend or whatever. And I would just see everything that everybody's going through. And it's like, Ooh, like it was so uncontrollable for me for so many years. I had no idea what was happening. I didn't know that I was gifted because, um, you know, as a firefighter, it's like, that's such taboo. That's so crazy. And you're a weirdo. Like we don't want that. And, um, and so, yeah, that's, that's, it's, it's hard for people that have no guidance or help to understand what's happening, but they're gifted. Mm -hmm. They're probably a healer and they don't know it. Right. Right. And I feel like that's, that's how we're able to hone in and, I don't want to say like, like dissect what someone is going through, but I think we're able to see it at just a different energetic level than they are. Like when someone says, oh, well, I'm feeling this, you're kind of like already in the back of your mind, you're already saying, yeah, but we already know there's something way below that, that needs to be addressed. And it's really not anything to do with that. But we have to let them kind of, we have to almost guide them through to be able to uncover that. Because I think if we come right out and say, no, that's not really what it is. This is really kind of what it is. I think it just, it takes away from their learning process of Mm. how they are able to self, like learn to self heal themselves because we want to be the vehicle that people we teach them the different tools that they can use on themselves for when they need that healing. So let's say they can't get in to have a, you know, a session with you, Thomas. So they, they're like, okay, well, what can I do? What are the the top three things I can do for myself right now that Thomas has taught me that I can get by with until I can see him? Or maybe Thomas taught me so many things that I don't have to go back to him right now. I'm comfortable with being able to diagnose and use my tools, my energetic tools to help me get through whatever it is that I'm doing or whatever it is that I'm going through. And I think that's more of, I don't want someone to be dependent on 
me as their person to tell them what they need to be doing. I want them to be able to learn and be able to do those things for themselves because we may not always be there. And that's the beauty of teaching them that that sovereignty of I can do this myself and you're you're taking back your power within yourself. You're not just saying, oh, well, they have to do it for me. It just starts to create a more powerful, I think, human within themselves. And then that will then spread out into other areas of their life and giving them that authority back. Yeah, so true. And it's such a different model than classic therapy or um, the medical field or like, and those have, you know, those are super important. They have their place. But I think, you know, like you're saying for me, like I, once I have a client for like three to six months, like I generally, I don't want to see them ever again. That's the hope, right? Like I want to give you enough tools to be so independent that you can, um, yeah, sure. You need acupuncture or massage or chiropractor. Yeah. Like totally. But it's not like, you don't need this huge like breakthrough hypnotherapy session because we've unblocked so much and now you can guide yourself through all that. And I, I love that. I love that. Um, it's so, so important. And yeah, what an amazing conversation we've had. And, and I, um, I think I want to respect your time. We could seriously <laughs> do 10 more podcasts, I think, because uh, we Probably. resonate so well. Um, but I want to ask like, um, how can people get a hold of you? How can they find you? How can they listen to your podcast? Um, yeah, what what does all that look like? So um, my podcast is uh, Tried and True with Caroline. And that's pretty much all about, um, you know, yes, I do have yoga and hypnotherapy and crystal and all those things on there. But I also like to bring in people that just inspire me and ha- have inspired my journey thus far. So you are going to hear from different types of professions, careers, um, not necessarily just all yoga and all hypnotherapy. So I think it's a very well-rounded, I want it to be a place where you can go and learn lots of different things. And at the end of the day, the goal is to inspire you to know that by taking action is the most important thing. It's better than taking no action. Any little action you take is better than no action at all. So that's the podcast. And um, my website is uh, the True North Tribe. So and true is spelled with no E. And that's where you can find uh, my different programs. Um, There's links to hypnotherapy sessions, um, energy healing sessions, and just finding, you know, I want that to be a, that was, that's a place where, you know, when you kind of just want to chill, I think that my website gives that vibe of just chilling and figuring out what you need. Um, the different services are there and finding your true North is, is pretty much once you find your direction and where you want to go, it's all about, you know, creating your map to how you feel like you need to get there because you can go look at everybody else's map, but the best map is going to be the one that you create yourself and through guidance and through, um, you know, knowledge and all of those things about how, you know, you work best is going to, to bring you to that, your true North, because we all have different true Norths. So that's why it's called true North. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. And all that stuff's going to be in the show links uh, for everybody listening. And, and Caroline, it was such a pleasure to interview you, to uh, meet you and to really go in depth into your life story and, and how you heal people and how you work with folks. And, and I just want to say thank you so much for being here. You're such, such an amazing uh, practitioner. And I can tell you've been trained really well and you know what you're doing and it's so powerful to meet practitioners like yourself and thank you for being here. And, and I just want to, you know, is there any last thoughts you want to leave the listeners with or, or anything um, before we part ways? Maybe my last parting thought would be is to just never give up on yourself. Always. There's always a way there's always a choice. 
And there's always someone out there to reach out to. And don't ever think that because of all of the things that have happened in your past, that that is, has to limit you to creating the future or a brighter future for yourself. So that's my, my parting wisdom is to just never give up. Mm, so, but so thank powerful. you so much. I've really enjoyed this conversation. And uh, like you said, it, it's, it's a breath of fresh air when we have, when we speak with individuals that as yourself, that, that know and appreciate, you know, the value of the, um, the healing that can take part in these alternative modalities. So I appreciate your time as well. Thank you, Thomas. Oh, thank you so much. And, and for everybody listening, please reach out to Caroline if you're interested in hypnotherapy, energy healing. Um, she's here to help help the wildland fire community in any way she can. So um, please reach out to her. The show links will be there. And uh, we love you all. And thank you for listening. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Thank you.